Hello everyone, uh, I'm your host Kale, um, and Wayward Dice, and today we're playing some Dark Sun 5e. Uh, I'm playing an Eladrin Mystic, who has some psionic powers and does some crazy things with his mind. Uh, his name is Sylvester. I'm Zach Fodgta, I'm playing Grumble Huff, a halfling barbarian who's looking for a new set of flavors. And by that you mean party members to nibble on? Oh, party members, slaves, food. It's all the same. But you guys don't have any slaves at this time. Well, no, I'm not planning on buying uh-huh. slaves. I'm planning on eating other people's slaves. Oh. Free oh. them from slavery and into my stomach. It's, it's like hunting, you know, like hunting baited, baited areas, you know? It's not near as, you know, fun or legal as hunting whenever it's not baited. Precisely. It's like the most dangerous game, except they can't fight back their slaves. Well, they could fight back. No, so, I'm kind of against the whole concept of slavery, so as your DM, I'm going to oppose this. I, I'm not going to own any slaves. <coughs> Anyways. You're just going to find them. I'm a, chaotic, I'm a chaotic character. I'm very pro-freedom. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course you are. Okay. okay. All right, uh, so our other uh, player, Ethan, is unable to make it tonight. Uh, I think he's watching, so... Hi, Ethan. Hey, Ethan. Uh, his character is Lobu, so he's becoming a, a DM-run NPC for the evening. I'll try not to kill him off. Uh, if it happens, it'll be totally accidental. And then, uh, there's also another DM NPC named Tristani. Tristani's a half-elf, uh, ranger. I guess I should point out that Lobu is a elf rogue. And, um, a charlatan to boot, so. Uh, playing 5th edition, Dark Sun. And, uh, kind of like running our own sandbox campaign. Um... Gosh, I guess we'll do a session recap here in just a minute. And uh, any, anything else before we get started? Uh, nothing I can think of. Right. Ethan good? did say that he is watching. Okay. That is good. Awesome. So he, I, right, so that means the stream's up. All right, let's go. Alrighty. <coughs> okay, so when we left off last, um, quick session recap if you're joining us for the first time. We've got um, a small party in a... Um, Oh man, in in Dark Sun, in uh, we haven't described the setting recently. We have not. Um, that could help to do. So we're running an old version of D and D setting. It goes back to second and fourth edition. We're we're doing the newest, latest D and D rule set, but we're using an old setting, and the setting is pretty wonderful because uh, the world is so terrible. Um, so here's just eight quick characteristics about the world. It's called Athis. Uh, the world's a desert. It's savage. There's a scarcity of metal, so a lot of equipment relies on leather, scales, uh, things that are scavenged from animals and from nature, not from metals. Um, when people cast arcane magic, it tends to destroy the world and like uh, vegetation, so people who cast magic are generally like despised or just attacked outright if they're seen using magic. Whereas Kale's character is a mystic using psychic powers, which is totally okay. So... Um, totally not game breaking or anything. Yeah, the uh, lands. Um, there's no like real countries. There's just these city states. Um, is Liechtenstein a city state? Well, or it, like the it, Vatican, maybe. It, it, um, they're both micro nations. I would assume the Vatican would. Yeah, so they're Vatican city states, city. and they're run by sorcerer kings who also are able to supply um, like powers and like answer the prayers of like their clerics because there's no gods. The gods are silent <coughs> here, uh, so the sorcerer kings are effectively de facto gods. And our uh, game actually started off with the assassination of the Sorcerer King of the City of Tyr, which is where the party has been adventuring in and around. And now they have just uh, fled Tyr and some of the things going on there, which I'll come to in a moment. And they're in a uh, nearby village. Um, Let's see, there's two other things. Uh, The world is full of uh, fierce creatures and monsters. You're just as likely to die of starvation or... um, dehydration, or just the local uh, plant or animal life, because the world is just really harsh. There's very little plant life, actually. And also, the typical D&D races are not what you expect. For example, our cannibalistic halfling. He doesn't eat halflings, but if you're a humanoid that's not halfling, then you're fair game. Well, I might, I might try a halfling every now and then. But it's more of a it's more of a ceremony in my culture. 
you have to be eaten to pass on to the spirit world. That's why I'm an ancestral guardian. Oh, so, so it's kind of like the Vikings, you know, sending them off on a ship and burning them, except you burn them at a campfire and snack on their uh, oh, man. leftovers. Not always burn them. You know, it could just be raw. <clears throat> That's what we do for Or frozen, you know. Frostbite really gets you. You know, it, it makes for quite a frosty bite. I think I mentioned last week regretting uh, creating this character. <laughs> but you're doing a great job. Thank you. It just makes me sad. At this moment, I'm probably... Uh, I'm, I'm not playing the Blizzoon right now. I'm actually writing on it. Oh, the Blizzoon. Yeah, the Blizzoon. In our previous session, we invented a musical instrument, complete with sound effects and a uh, whole backstory and everything. Yeah, did, you, can... did you draw... Oh, yeah. I didn't go. draw one. I was going to, and I completely forgot. But I can try to make that dice noise again. That <clears throat> worked pretty well. It was like, no, that's not going to work. Already? Like a rainmaker. Yeah. yeah. I'll have <laughs> but, to make uh, one in real life. Man... Are, are we inside of a cave that's, like, super dangerous? Yeah, well, we're getting there. All right. Yeah, so, I'm not worrying about it right now. So, uh, after the assassination of the uh, Sorcerer King, the um, party went off, um, not immediately, but that kind of happened in, like, the recent past, maybe, like, a month or two ago, uh, in game time. And uh, the party did some adventuring. They came back to the city and found the city um, buried in fog, and it had this, like, um, this ziggurat that was... Um, Rainbow kind of like colors. spewing sort of like a magical cloud into the air so that the city was like um, had like a cloud like hanging over itself and then also inside the city let me grab that in yeah. here if we can move it just a little bit closer um, yeah, well, okay, it's harder to see whenever it's right. this far so back. basically there's this giant rainbow colored ziggurat or pyramid in the center of town that was spewing a cloud, that's it, that's it. Okay. And we escaped out of that down uh, that gate in the southeast. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, so they discovered while they were there, um, in the fog were these, like, um, like large egg-type things that had people inside of them that were dead. And those were kind of, like, just poking out of the fog. And then, of course, there's the uh, magical, like, clouds. It wasn't, like, rain clouds, but, like, this dark, oppressive cloud hanging over the town. And there were the uh, skeletal uh, dre. Um, they were kind of chasing around, shooting arrows and throwing spears, um, which you guys outrun. And also some zombie-like uh, population, like old, uh, like slaves and stuff who had died that were shuffling around. Uh, none of your pursuers were very quick, though, so you guys managed to flee the town. Um, very well. So once they got to the uh, the village. Um, which we named, or I have Sand Trap written. No, it's not Sand Trap. Yeah, it's it was Sand Trap. Uh, yes, the village. Shen. 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 Shen dead arms, and I think you saw the tops of the heads. I guess you could go back and dig them up. You'd have to go back upstairs. Some people call them crumbies. Oh, that's just you speaking. I'm not doing that. But they fled the sand trap uh, further into the ruin. They were investigating a ruin on the um, outskirts of town. Uh, But actually, they went into the ruin to flee a sandstorm, which is incoming. So they're fleeing a sandstorm right into a conveniently uh, placed dungeon, uh, into a sand trap of, like, zombie and ghoul arms. And they fled further down the stairs, which is where we left off last Mm -hmm. time. So we'll just pick up with the scene. All right, so you guys have arrived on the bottom of the stairs. Um, I was for slashing. the sake of for the sake of like mechanics, um, Tristani and Lobu will be kind of be towards the back of the party. They're dealing with all and those And they both have uh, bows. So let's say they have bows drawn, and you mm-hmm. guys are kind of get two in the front. So you'll take all the action moments and all the, like the speaking parts. Yeah. And they'll kind of be in the back of the scene. They're in scene. But they're kind of in the background with their bows. We care about the drama of the, the, the present. Yes. <laughs> drama queen. <clears throat> All right. And so um, so you've arrived down at the base of the stairs. Uh, the stairway was about, um, who said it was like five, five to ten feet wide. Mm-hmm. And um, about, so it's about cute. We'll say like eight feet. And um, uh, very dark. Uh, it's not naturally lit. Um, I believe... Uh, Somebody, you weren't carrying a torch, but people were carrying torches. Yeah. I actually think Lo, was Lobo carrying a torch, and Tristani uh, was carrying yes, a torch. Lobo was carrying a torch. Um, okay. And so they've got their bows in one hand, and they have a torch in the other one, mm-hmm. and they can just like kind of like, stick the torch somewhere if they need to like shoot their bows. But they're ready. 
Uh, to They'll shoot. fire the torches whenever it needs to go. And um, we can also, um, the, if the audience wants to interject with any actions for these uh, DM run NPCs, feel free to um, shout out. And uh, Kale, if you want to kind of like scan the chat, yeah. so like if if uh, Ethan wants to play from a distance, uh, <laughs> he can call out uh, things or whatever. Um, Lobo steals in the air stagger. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. So uh, the stairs open up into a dark but uh, wide and expansive chamber. The chamber is supported by old um, stone columns, like uh, it's hewn rock. Obviously, uh, it's not like a cave. It's definitely a ruin, like an ancient structure some prior civilization and uh, the stones seem very well fitted together but they're worn with age maybe the occasional like cobweb that sort of thing but what's really interesting is in the torchlight is now you have a low lying layer of fog just like back in tier except instead of being up to your waist and waist height which to you was like like up to here yeah it's now down like to here on you and to you it's down more like towards just above your knees. It's not waist high, it's about a foot lower. Yeah. My um, INX isn't really much of a height okay. beast. You also have noticed that there were some eggs in the fog, uh-huh. but the eggs are now only half submerged in fog. So instead of being seeing the tip of the eggs in the fog, mm-hmm. you're seeing like the whole top half of the eggs, and there's, they look almost identical to the ones you've seen do, before. Do they look a little bit more scary now that we can see more of them? Well, prior you were in tier on the surface, surrounded, I mean, during the daytime, it was mm-hmm. cloudy, but you were out in the open air. Weren't they- now you're underground in a ruin. So this is a little more... Yeah. Uh, if your torches were out, it would be, like, pitch black. Well, there, like, which, I mean, if you have night vision, then you, that is... I'm pretty is. sure that you're... It is just... What is Tristani? What race is Tristani? Half elf. Half elf. You're the only one that can't see in the dark, so yeah. if our torches go out, I think we'll be okay. Well, I can um, smell yeah. the fear in my f- opponents. He'll just, he'll just smell the blood trail you're leaving behind and yeah, you're yeah, fleeing yeah, from yeah, your e- dead Either that, ones. or, you know, you know your sense of fear might, might, might dwell on the party members... I'm an ancestral guardian. I'll just use the spirits around me to oh, guide me. Um, yeah. It'll work. Ethan uh, did say just steal some daggers for him. Okay. All right. Um, weren't there Dre last time we were here? Or uh, yeah, something? I wasn't done with the description. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so besides the eggs, you also saw uh, the forms of some Dre. I think I said three. Let's go ahead and let the dice gods decide. Let's roll out a d4. Zach. Exactly. Two. Two. All right. We'll nice. say you can see two Dre. Um, we'll say there may be like... Uh, kind of like on the edge of your tor- light, torchlight, you can make them out. Now, if you're wondering about Dre, I didn't mention this earlier, they're basically like dragonborn, so they're like humanoids, but they like, have like dragon-like characteristics. And for our game, we're going to say that the uh, Dre uh, almost looks skeletal, uh, like a very skeletal version of a dragon, and they do not look like the the um, dragonborn in like the player's handbook, for example. They're much more skeletal. Uh, everything's really drawn, and like you can just very... They just, and even like the faces and stuff, it looks just very like gaunt and like elongated, much more monstrous looking and much less humanoid looking, but they do stand on their hind feet and so on. And some of them look almost like dragons and some of them look maybe a little more. So there's, they're like some variations. So they're like, they're, they're like kind of the build of kobolds, but they look like dragons. Like, tw- um, no, they're bigger. But the pets, oh, I guess kobolds uh, are short. I kobolds was can also be described like dogs, and some of them are more like dragons. Yeah, so I was thinking of like bulk wise, but that makes yeah. sense. Um, if you're familiar with the black dragons in D and D, black dragons seem more skeletal in appearance. <coughs> I kind of remember thinking of these more like like a black dragon, or just very skeletal. Like, okay. Like if you had like a dra- a dragonborn that had starved to death and shrunken down. Yeah, I was thinking but like then a it was still alive. emaciated mm-hmm. dragonborn kind of creatures. Yeah. Anyway, if they were any more skeletal looking, they'd be dead. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, um, undead. In this anyways, case. and we'll find out maybe more about them since you're encountering at least two more on the edge of your uh, torchlight, mm-hmm. and uh, they appear to be like, um, like watching you guys. Uh, I think I think we'll say they actually like have weapons in hand. We'll say one has. What do you say? They both have spears. They have like spears in hand, and they're just kind of watching. Uh, as you guys descend with the torch lights, it's pitch black down here. So in the torch light, um, you guys uh, stand out obvious as like you're coming down the stairs. So you're totally like anything down here that has vision can see you. Um, anyways, and so this opening area goes off beyond the torch light. So it's actually a pretty large open area. Uh, held up by pillars. There's eggs in the fog. There's a couple uh, dre in the distance. And we've got our two characters in the back row. You two are in the front row. Um, and I think you also had your kinks with you as well. So you're leading your kinks. I don't have a kinks. I cut its head off. 
Yeah. But the so rest you guys of have best. kinks, and then you have your Inix. Are you writing your Inix? I'm writing my Inix. So you're on Inix back. Inix hump. Well, people are going to think it's a camel. So kinks are like gigantic lizards. There's no horses to ride. Uh, kinks ponies. are gigantic ants. S- sorry. Kinks are gigantic ants. The Inix is like, like a gigantic lizard. Except you have a young Inix. And since you're a halfling, it's perfectly sized for you. Yeah. When he grows up, I'll walk him around. It'll be good. Yeah. I get some more tea. Uh, if you ask nicely. Please. We're going to pause the entire storytelling process to watch tea pour. Watch your um, brains catch up. Yeah. Are we uh, overlooking anything? I think that's everything I can remember. You're fleeing the sandstorm. Went through the sand trap of, like, Mm -hmm. ghoul arms. I have five more experience points than everyone else. Ah, yes. That's a very important fact. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe you'll eventually have six more experience points than everyone else. I'm the most experienced out of any of us, and I'm new here, so it's great. Look at you go. (coughs) All right. So there's a scene... Um, what do you guys do? Oh, there's two Dre. Uh, I believe that I'd like to kind of further look around. I like um, to sniff the air. Like, you know, kind of like, like try to use my mind to like map everything around me. I guess I, I'd be making a perception check. Perception check. Okay. Yeah. And you? I'm sniffing the air. You know, and I kind of catch the, sn- okay. the, the scent perception of Perception check for me as well. That's a ten. Uh, that's a six. Sniffing isn't really the best way to. <laughs> it's just things. really musty down here, uh-huh. and um, we'll say that you you detect besides the two dre, mm-hmm. uh, you can kind of like feel the coldness of like distant walls on either side, so that you can tell that the room does eventually end, probably a little bit further in torchlight on either direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then where the dre are beyond their mind touch, you can sense maybe another another mind another beyond being. them that you can't see in the torch, or okay. even even with your dark vision or whatever. Um, so with these two dre here, um, I think I'd like to try and like tap into one of their heads and like make them see like a torchlight in the direction that I that I feel like another being. If that makes any sense. Um, mechanically, I'm just making an object appear within a five foot, uh, uh, five foot cube in the one of their minds. It's a basically a cantrip uh, that I have. What's your cantrip called? Uh, it is called delusion. It's not actually a cantrip, but it's mechanically. One. So while he's doing all this brain stuff, <coughs> I'm kicking, not kicking, but you know, uh, spurring on. Yeah, spurring on of my Ionix. <laughs> And taking out my bone blade, getting ready to charge at this... Uh, um, plant a false belief in the mind of one creature you can see within 60 feet. 